I thought this was a very you know instructive game, okay. and uh, also it can generally like what Kappa Blanca used to say, and what was one of his saying is that the stronger the player, the better he gets with the bishops. Like knights, you you can learn how to play because they color both color uh, they cover both color complexes, but bishop covers only one, so many times very difficult. So let's just see. You went queen g five. He went queen g three. So exchanging is very good. Takes f six and knight f three. So here for me it is a little bit of a mistaken idea that you played, which was rook f eight. Because if you see and if you look at the imbalances, your minor piece is stronger than his. His d4 is a weakness, so it makes all the sense for you to double up on d5. You will at least win a pawn. So let's assume that if you if you did like rook d7 with the idea of rook d8 and putting a king here, then you will always have this threat and then picking up this pawn where you will be pawn up. Right. He might have to get really passive like this. Then you can start expanding here. You will also have the ability to break with a5 if he takes, then move rook a8 and then create another weakness on a3. Got it. So by keeping the rooks, you would have put immense pressure on him. Got it. But when you exchanged, you kind of narrowed down the playing field, which is not bad to say that you you made a wrong decision or something. This is also a very pleasant position. You are very right when you said that. <coughs> I thought there are only two results possible here, which is like a draw or you win. <coughs> so no, I thought actually I extend the rooks because of isolated queen pawn and uh, he already had a double pawn. So I just thought that king will go and eat d4. I didn't calculate. Ha, but when there is an isolated pawn, it is important. It is good to keep major pieces. Hmm. Okay. Not minor pieces. With mm. minor pieces, now your bishop can no longer attack this. Right. But if you had a rook, <coughs> then it could have attacked this easily. So, uh, if what you could have done is exchange the bishop for a knight, not immediately because your bishop is very strong, but keep that threat and keep the rooks on the board. Okay. So you went king f seven, which looks very very logical uh, in a way. Another idea which you should always remember is if the knight is on the last rank, you can always dominate it with your bishop by two squares away. You can keep your bishop. Uh, bishop e four. Yes. So it's a it's a very Good. nice move here. Yeah, bishop e four. Then you play f five. Then his knight is correct. Knight but he can always come to f three, and then you will have to calculate if the king and pawn endgame is winning for you or not. So that is always a. Uh, Tricky thing, but first you brought your king, which is logical. He also brought his king. You also brought your king. He also brought his king. And now, if you if you think about it, your bishop is very much superior to his knight. Right. And this will remain for a long time, not just for this move. Yeah. So if you think about it, he has a weakness here. Correct. Which your bishop is attacking. And so, by the principle of two weaknesses, you can imagine that you need to create one more target, but it's difficult to create. Because you know, how do you create a target here on this side of the board when you have a light squared bishop? So this is where you have to think a bit. कि क्या कर सकते हैं? And this is where you have to uh, give up a little bit of your like full full control. You will have to give up a bit of your control. Mm. B six is good or what? what I mean, king five h five we have discussed. You want to you want to go king f five and h five and g five. You know that's one idea. Yeah. The other one, as you said right now, is b six. You said, but what is the plan? 
A5. A5. Okay. But if he doesn't touch it, then you will take, he will take back. What did you gain? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if you gain something. Hmm. Uh, I think King F5 is very easy to play actually. Right, but uh, okay, so King F5 is one, then he, he plays Knight F3 maybe. And then you cannot take yet because this is most likely a draw, this position. You don't have, I mean, he also has his pawns, it's not easy to break it. So let's, let's just look at one sample like let's say king d6 actually okay now my idea is imagine okay in a in a perfect world where you where white is not making any moves that i play b6 i play c5 okay then he takes 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 this is the kind of position where your bishop will dominate the knight correct because the knight has to is stuck here and your king is going now here to attack. So you created another weakness. That is one, just one thought that you should keep in mind. That when the bishop is there, if the play starts happening on both sides, then your minor piece will be superior. So king d6 is one uh, possibility to do this way. What else? Let's say, for example, uh, let's let's say king d6. You go g4. I think this is very logical because you want to play g3 next move. But now you have to be tactically alert. So this, of course, there are no tactics here because you will take back. But think of it. What do you do here? and use your superior mobility where would you like your king to be king on a3 is damn nice but yes. um... if your if your king gets in here then it's mm. khatam for him you know like it's too strong so let's imagine you drop your bishop back attacking this pawn this is one of the things which we do not think of. No, 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 bishop is so good on d5, we don't want to move it. But now I'm clearing the square for my king. He has yeah. to play h3. I go king d5. Now I'm threatening to come With here, unique. here and here. Now it feels like... It feels right. Because yeah. your bishop when was, it was on d5, your king wanted that square. Right. But you didn't Correct. know how to get it. So king d6. Yeah. And coming back now let's assume that he tries to stop what do you do again you should know how to use your bishops in such positions hmm. i think f5 is good that is a direct way very natural but maybe he will go g5 g6 first sorry, no, sorry. uh first g5 with the idea of next move f5 Possible, possible. He will go knight f3. Then, if you go f5, your g5 pawn would be handy. Let's be a little subtle. Make use of your bishop. Hmm. Bishop f7 is yes. good. Bishop f7. And now your idea is ki yahan se check ding. Now, once you give a check from here, either he will go to c3 when your king will start entering from here, or he will go to e3. When your king will start entering from here. Yeah. Now very... it becomes very clear that why uh, black is winning. So it was a matter of coordinating your pieces. Right. And uh, uh, this would this would be winning. But let's just quickly see what you did in the game. Because it's very instructive. You went g6 first. Which was in a way not a good move. Because you're placing the pawn on the same color as your bishop. Honestly, it was just a waiting move to, I thought the more he plays, I'll put him in Zugzwang somehow. I don't know why I thought that. I just thought that because the pawn structure is bad, eventually I have a bishop to make uh, lose a tempo. 
knight can't lose a tempo so highly but knight is not trapped if the knight was trapped or had to make only back and forth moves that's okay but once he gets g4 g3 his knight can come into the game from various ways hmm. so here it was still not this knight losing a tempo thing may not come here it comes in only situations yeah. where there are no plans so here g4 good move by him you went h6 now here on principle what would be a good move just on principle not like going deep into g5 g5 yes because G5. you fix his pawn on your color of your bishop and you put this pawn opposite color of your bishop so this would have been a good move you went h6 he went g3 you went g5 which is good now he went h4 you played b6 knight d3 a6 so if you see you were you wasted a lot of time and you let him develop and your king and bishop remained where they were if you had interchanged their positions you would have been better mm. a4 which was very nice now he made very good use of your uh, of the imbalance of knight and bishop by closing the position so if yeah. you were here and you had to turn the tide around how would you do it because he's he has a threat now bishop c4 well he what does he want bishop c4 is possible he wants to come to c5 na ha he wants to come to c5 this square correct yeah and also he wants to fix your weakness with a5 basically a5 we should play ha ah, but if you play a5 take take now what happens is if he gives a check let's say you play king d6 then there's knight b7 you must play no but but just imagine this situation wow is trapped <laughs> because again bishop pawn so agar if you know these rules and you think of it little bit knight if he takes this pawn it's trapped so in a way tactically your pawn is safe that means you have fixed his weakness here mm. on on the square of your bishop so a5 very good idea so b5 is bad, bad. and a5 very good move by him because he now fixed your a6 pawn and then you went on to lose this game but very instructive and very uh, nice uh, I, I guess a little bit of things are clearer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This bishop playing on both sides important. Yes. Also trying to get your king in so that the bishop dominates, and at the same time trying to open up the position like this one which we saw uh, here, which was d6 and c5 and such a position would really, yeah, benefit your bishop. Okay.